Hi, I'm Deborah, And I'm Lawrence, and apologies for me looking like a mess, I just finished exercising. In this video, we're going to talk about five ways that narcissistic parents damage their children. And that doesn't mean there are only five ways. Oh, there's plenty more. There's many more, but these are just, you know, five of, of probably the most um, general. The first way that, and probably actually the, the biggest way that narcissists damage their children is that their love is conditional. Children of narcissistic parents learn that they have to meet certain expectations to get love from their parents. Yeah, the, the parents are basically teaching them that they don't deserve love unless they're, you know, they act like this, they do yeah. good. Depending uh -huh. on the parents' uh, priorities. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it might it might just be on their day-to-day -day -day behavior. So, and I mean, you know. The, and then there's like, you know, if, if you don't get into a good college, you're going to, they, they don't love you because. So, again, that's yeah. meeting expectations. Yeah, they, you need yeah. to meet their expectations. And, you know, and then, you know what, the thing is their expectations keep going up because, you know. You, yeah, well, it, you, can, you never satisfy their expectations. No, no, never. And the thing is, if you're, if you're a child of a narcissistic parent, you may not understand that that's not the way that things are supposed to be. Yeah. The way things are supposed to be is that parents love their children unconditionally. That means without conditions. In other words, no matter what they do. Um, one thing that small children often say when they're told they've been, when they're being told they've done something wrong or that there's a punishment or something like that, is they'll say, do you still love me? And parents who are normal say, of course I love you. There's, you know, I love you no matter what. They may add, depending on the ch child's age, right now I don't like you very much, or I don't like what you said, or I don't like what you did, but I will always love you. Nothing will change. Nothing you do will ever change that. Um, and that's the opposite of what the narcissistic parent does. The narcissistic parent will, will frequently be um, holding up hoops for the yeah. child to jump through. They won't come. They won't come out and say, if you want me to say, I love you, you have to do this. But they make it very clear. Yeah, because yeah. they're going to, I don't know, call you a disappointment because you aren't uh, yeah, fulfilling their... Yeah, or if you do something that they don't approve of or that they told you not to do or to do and you didn't do it or whatever, um, they'll withhold affection, okay? And again, a normal parent would say, okay, I'm really disappointed in you. Or something like that. But I will still always love yeah. you. The second way that narcissistic parents um, damage their children is they always put themselves first. Again, if you're the child of a narcissistic parent, this may not seem so odd to you. But the fact is that normal, healthy, you know, emotionally healthy parents actually often have a problem with putting themselves before their children. Because it's it's kind of understood that when you have children, you're going to sacrifice certain things. You're going to sacrifice um, money, time. energy, and time to your child's well-being. Um, that's just the way it is because they're dependent on you for for many, many years. So um, that's kind of like the the you know the deal you make, and that you know that you're going to, to going to be upholding. Um, the problem with narcissists is they don't have the ability to put anyone else first. And um, so a, a lot of um, children of, of um, severely narcissistic parents are neglected, um, um, not only emotionally, which is obvious, but their, their, their nutrition may be neglected, um, their, their living space may be neglected. Um, certainly the you know, the things that, that kids normally do, like extracurricular activities, you know, that they may need money for, you know, um, their baseball uniform to play baseball. Um, the narcissistic parent is, is not going to be willing in many cases to give up what they would need to give up to provide these things. So, for instance, you know, if, if as children do, uh, their child needs new clothes because they've outgrown the other ones. If the narcissistic parent has something they want to spend that money on, they won't think twice about about spending it yeah. on that instead of buying clothes for their child. Because they're narcissistic. Yeah. They care so much about themselves and, you know, they're not going to let anybody else get in the way of that. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and, and that example might be kind of rare because that touches on another thing. A narcissistic parent generally would not want to be thought, to, even if they're a really horrible parent, they, they don't want to be thought of as a horrible parent because they know that society and their community expects that parents are going to put their children's welfare first. So for instance, in some cases, they'll lie. So if someone says, oh, I thought, you know, so-and-so, I thought, you know, um, John was going to uh, play baseball this year. And they'd say, oh, you know, he just didn't want to. Not, oh, I decided to spend, you know, the money for his, that would go to his uniform on something for me. Yeah. Of course, obviously they know enough to know that that sounds terrible. So they're, you know, they, they're, they don't care. Yeah. Well, they, they, they don't want, but they don't want any, anyone outside the home to think yeah. that they're less than a perfect parent. Yeah. So the result of this is that in many cases, the child will have, um, will get used to their needs being second. And so they'll, you know, even when they're an adult, they may have trouble articulating what they want or need. Yeah. Because they aren't used to actually considering, uh, what they need. Or they're afraid to. They're used to their their wants and needs being disregarded when they they vocalize them. So after a while, you know, you learn not to do that. The third way that narcissistic parents can damage their children is um, being possessive and controlling. So some narcissistic parents are neglectful and barely seem to know that they actually have a child. Um, and again, the child's needs are not met because the parent is too self-involved to, to worry about them. Um, but others are possessive and controlling. They see the child as an extension of themselves. They're they living through them. Yeah, well, they can, that's one way. They live through them, but essentially the child is an extension of themselves. The child has no personality. So therefore, any deviation, any time the child deviates from being an extension of their personality, uh, thing, things They're don't go well upset. for them. Yeah, things don't go well for the child. So it can be something as simple as their taste in music, movies, books, um, you know, something like that. Fashion. The fashion, exactly. Fashion. Um, political beliefs. Political beliefs. I actually had that down. You're so smart. And they're generally consequences when they do deviate. Um, these can take different forms. They could be um, just, uh, they could be withholding affection, um, using guilt, um, or out and out punishment. So, you know, for instance, the the girl or boy who, who, you know, shaves their head and pierces their ears and their preppy parent, you know, obviously wouldn't be happy about that. And the parent may Because they're a out. loser. Yeah, the parent may freak out and ground them or do worse. You know, some narcissistic parents are extremely abusive. Imagine being a, a preppy loser. <laughs> so, so the problem is, as you can imagine, the result of this is that um, they don't develop their own identity and they can't develop their authentic self. Because if, if things are really bad, they don't, they have no idea what they're what they like. They have no idea what their interests are. They have no idea what their tastes are, depending on how extreme the, uh, probably the, um, you know, the brainwashing has been by the parent. So the fourth way that a narcissistic parent can damage their child is by downplaying a child's concerns. So if a child comes to the narcissistic parent with a concern or a fear, um, then the parent is just as likely to talk about themselves, either something in the present or in the past. So for instance, let's say the child comes to the parent and says, I don't have any friends. Well, the narcissistic parent, instead of saying, oh, honey, you know, I'm talking to them about it and maybe trying to figure out a strategy for, you know, to, for them to develop friendships, will possibly talk about either when they were younger, how, um, how they had no friends and blah, blah, blah. And not as a way to be empathetic with the child, but to say my situation was worse. Or they may talk about how popular they were. So, you know, which obviously isn't, neither of which is helpful. Thankful, thankfully, you weren't that popular. So I didn't, I, I, you know, I could relate much easier. Yeah, but if I was a narcissistic parent, I would say I had things much worse than you. Yeah, true. You know, so, so again... 
Um, the parent can either be talking about that because they're a normal empathetic parent and say, oh, I understand, you know, I, I had the same thing happen to me. I did, I had trouble making friends, but then they would lead on to talking about the child situation. So then the child would know that they were heard and, you know, that their pain and their problem was acknowledged. So as a re one result of this could be that the child falls into the habit of di dismissing their own concerns. And obviously you can see how dangerous this could be in many, many ways. And the, the fifth way that narcissistic parents can damage their child is this. Narcissistic people can't stand being wrong. Because here's the thing. While you may think that a narcissistic person has like an overblown ego, like overly developed, it's actually generally the reverse. Narcissistic people often are created because they're insecure. Their parent, the parenting that raised them Wasn't was the best. Either, yeah, was not the best. So it was maybe either, um, uh, you know, outright verbally or physically or sexually abusive or, um, you know, they, um, or it was just things like being told that they weren't pretty, weren't smart. Um, so something happens or, you know, there's a parent that's, that's very remote, for instance. Um, so, so what happens is then is, is like a reaction to that and, and out, like an outsized reaction to that. So they develop what looks like this huge ego, but it's actually extremely fragile and they have very thin skin and they can't take, um, they can't take not just criticism, but they can't deal with the possibility that they might've been wrong or at fault in a situation. So if that happens to a narcissistic parent, who's the target? Who's the one to put all the blame on? It's the child because first of all, they're less likely to be believed if a parent says, oh, it was, it was, you know, my child's fault mm. um, or my child screwed up or my child didn't tell me this. You know, a lot of times narcissistic people may do this to their partners. Well, he was supposed to tell me that the party was today. It wasn't my fault that we missed it, you know, or something like that. Because you know what? If, if nobody else is at fault, that means they're at fault and they well, can't handle that. But that's the funny thing is sometimes there's a situation where no one is at fault and the narcissistic parent can't recognize that, that everyone's just going to say, well, it wasn't really anyone's fault. Um, they'll still have to find someone to blame just to make absolutely sure that the blame does not it's fall on them. them. So the result of this is not really hard to figure. No. There are a lot of ways in which this is going to screw up um, a child if they're always in the wrong. This, this is such a complicated topic. And as I said in the beginning, these are all five out of, out of you many. Know, many ways that narcissistic parents can damage their children. And there are, there are you know, narcissism is, is on a spectrum. Um, so you have people who are, you know, severely narcissistic and their children really suffer greatly. And then, you know, there, there are people who grew up with a narcissistic parent who wasn't extreme. So, so these, you know, these examples aren't going to apply to everyone who has a narcissistic parent or not necessarily to the same degree. Um, but hopefully this has been helpful. Yeah. If you found it helpful, you can give this video a like. If you didn't, you can give it a dislike. Um, if you want to say anything at all, you can leave it in the form of a comment. And if you'd like to see more of this content, you're welcome to subscribe. But in any case, we hope that you have as nice a day as you can during these times. Take care.